Hello, good afternoon. My name is Lisa Beth Doyle. I'm the manager of health and wellness at Always Health Partners. And thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Um, our topic today is ergonomics. And in order to be productive, we all need a space and setup that allows us to work comfortably. And this can be particularly challenging for those of us who are working at home and may not have a purpose-built home office. Um, I frequently find myself working from the couch, working from the kitchen table, um, a variety of places. Our presenter today, Michelle Rex Murphy, has a background in occupational therapy and is an ergonomic specialist with Mass General Brigham. I'm looking forward to hearing her tips and guidelines to help avoid injury, eye strain, and other discomforts, regardless of where we work. Before I turn this over to Michelle, I just want to let you know that we will leave time at the end for any questions you may have. And now, here is Michelle. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you, Lisa. Um, if you can go to the next slide, we'll get, get started right away. So we're going to learn a little bit about ergonomics and we're going to talk about the home environment setup, um, the elements that are involved in that. And then we're going to talk about, um, you know, methods to reduce your discomfort and how to achieve the best workstation setup. And I hope Everyone loves the picture of the puppy. Um, my sister's COVID puppy, we're calling her. She's the sweetest thing. She's a rescue, but she's adorable. So I hope everybody likes it. So we'll go to the next slide. We'll get started on the definitions. And if you can hit the next button to bring up the definitions. I think there's a couple more definitions. So basically, what is ergonomics? Um, it's the study concerned finding ways to keep people safe, comfortable, and productive while they perform their tasks at work and at home. I mean, if you think about it, uh, things you do at home like vacuuming, uh, laundry, things like that, that all involves ergonomics and how to keep yourself safe doing that. Um, it's basically fitting the task to the human, um, or in this case, you know, fitting the home to the worker. So I'll go to the next slide. So in ergonomics, we um, look at risk factors and some of the ergonomic risk factors are, you know, non-neutral awkward postures such as slouch, slouching, raising your shoulders, you know, working with your arms stretched out, bent wrists, things like that. I might do some animated things here to kind of give you guys a little bit of um, visual um, cues. Um, force, so um, when muscles um, exert force that exceeds their capability, um, such as heavy lifting, pushing and pulling, things like that. Those are risk factors. Repetition, doing the same thing over and over again is a risk factor. And then the duration of that. Um, and also, you know, the lack of rest and recovery, um, how long you hold a static posture, things like that. And a combination of these actually increases the risk, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have you go to the next slide. So in ergonomics, we talk about working in neutral body posture. Um, so it allows the most efficient muscle usage and produces the lowest risk of injury. Um, when we're working in neutral, we're actually doing things, we can do more in neutral body postures than, ex than, ex than in non-neutral body postures. Um, so non-neutral or extreme positions, um, they put additional strain on the muscles and joints. So we can't do as much work in those positions. So you wanna think about comfortable positions. You know, um, I'm gonna probably mention this throughout, working on a computer is kind of like, I equate it to driving a car. We sit back, we're relaxed, you know, we have where we can reach the pedals, we can reach the steering wheel, and we can look and see what we need to see very efficiently. So I'm gonna have to go to the next, posh, the next slide. Um, so why is it important? Like I said, um, the further or longer you're away from a neutral position, your muscle fatigue increases. Um, you fatigue a lot quicker and that leads to discomfort. I'm gonna have you go to the next. So we wanna find our neutral, um, most comfortable position. So this is just a way to do it when you're sitting and sitting down and working. Um, if you push your chair away from your you know, your desk or table, whatever you're working on, if you're sitting in a chair, um, you want to sit down comfortably. You want to scoot your bottom as far back in your chair as possible. Like I said, I'm probably going to do a little bit of animation here. Um, again, so for many people, it'd be like sitting in a car. You're sitting back. You're supporting your back. Um, your feet are on the floor in front of you. Your hands are on your lap. Your shoulders are 
down and relaxed. Your upper body is supported. Um, you don't wanna sit upright. You know, you hear, oh, ergonomics, I need to sit up straight, right? So what happens when people, so I'm sitting back, I'm relaxed right now. If I said to myself, sit up straight, I go like this, right? So I'm um, up, but I took my back support away um, and I don't wanna do that. You kind of want to scoot, I tell people, scoot your bottom back and kind of sink into that support. Um, you want to sink into that lumbar support because you need that, that lower back supported. So that's comfortable to me. Um, I do, re I tend to recline a little bit when I work on a computer and that's not a bad thing. Um, unfortunately, then your keyboard and you know monitor may be in a different place, but then we can fix that. You get yourself comfortable first, right? <clears throat> so that way your vertebrae are stacked and your entire back moves as you breathe and your pelvis is positioned so that your spine is stacked properly. Um, so that's your neutral posture. So I tell people to scoot the bottom back, sink into their seat, and then you know if their hands are on their legs, then just lift them up a tiny, tiny bit, kind of shown in the picture there. And that's where your keyboard and mouse need to be, because that's comfortable. Now you're supported. I'm gonna have you go to the next slide. We're gonna get a little more about that later. But we're gonna talk about the elements um, of a workstation setup. Um, you know, you wanna pick a good work surface. Then we're gonna talk about the chair, keyboard, the pointing device, which is, you know, your mouse, however you maneuver around the screen, your monitor position, and then we're also gonna to touch on other elements such as working on a laptop at home, lighting and work habits. I'm gonna have you go to the next slide. So we're gonna start with the work surface, the work area. You know, where do you set up to work? People, you know, at home, you're at a dining room table, you may have a desk, you may have a separate area where you do have a desk or, or maybe just a table to work at. Um, you may sit on your couch, you may sit in your bed, you may stand at a counter. There are different places where you can work in your home. I'm gonna have you go to the next slide. So when you're picking a work surface, you definitely wanna do a hard, flat, straight work surface. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> I've seen a lot in offices and even when I go to now, and it's kind of old school to me, people work like in a 90 degree corner and they set their computer up in that corner, maybe for reasons such as they have people in their office. So they wanna be able to see the people in their office, you know, sitting on the chairs, um, but it's not ideal to work in a 90 degree corner. You can actually make that 90 degree corner into a, strat, a straight work surface. So that's um, a good thing. Um, but you wanna do a hard, flat, straight surface. You wanna remove clutter, any drawers directly in front of your seat where you're sitting. You can stand on at counters. Um, you can get creative at home. You can use an ironing board that can serve as an adjustable height work surface. So you can stand up, you can you know raise it up to the height you need it. You can, if you wanna sit, then you can just lower it down to the height you need it. But you want to um, make sure your work surface allows uh, movement of your legs while sitting. You don't want to be constricted underneath. Um, and then it should be high enough for your legs to fit underneath also. I'm going to have you go to the next slide. So we talked about the work surface, then we talk about the chair. Um, like I said, you pick a work surface, then we're going to work from ground up. We, we look at the chair first. Like I, I always tell people, when I go to see them, move yourself away from the desk. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but we're gonna start with the chair. So you want a properly designed chair that adjusts and it wants you wanna provide support for your body, back, legs, your bottom, and your arms. You know, not necessarily your arms are that important. Um, I used to work on chairs that had no arms and I had no problem with it. Um, if someone has an injury to their shoulders and they want that arm support, then yes, I would recommend that. But otherwise, I tell, tell people arms down and out of the way, you know, don't let them interfere with your work. But I think the most important things are your back and your feet need to be supported. So pressures, contact, which are contact stressors, and we'll talk a little more about that. Um, Overexertion and fatigue may be reduced with a proper chair. Um, because you're supporting yourself. You don't have to work. Your back doesn't have to work to keep you upright. You want to, like I said, sink down and support your back. 
Um, and then also proper circulation is promoted with it to the extremities. You don't want any contact stressors. Um, yep, you can go to the next slide, that's fine. <laughs> um, so again, I find it very comfortable to have a chair with a cushion backrest. Um, so you, your back is fully supported. Um, the new thing out there, you know, the mesh backs and even the mesh seats, Honestly, you know, a mesh back is okay as long as you have that extra lumbar support. But I find that the cushion backrests, the old, I guess you can call it the old school chairs, are, are the best, okay? You don't want to sit on something that does not have back support, such as a stool or an exercise ball. Um, sorry about my accent. I'm from New York. <laughs> um, so you don't get any back support from that. So what happens is, again... It's like when telling someone to sit upright. So you, you sit upright, right? I'm not supporting my back. So that's how you sit on a stool or exercise ball. Over time, like probably eight, 10 minutes, you're gonna start to slouch and fatigue. And then that's gonna lead to, you know, um, non-neutral postures. It also affects your breathing. So you can't breathe properly. Um, you're not getting oxygen and blood flow to the, the areas you need it. So you're going to fatigue a lot quicker when you're not supported. Um, so you want to sit properly in a chair, like I said before, um, you know, bend at the hips when you go to sit, stick your bottom as far back as you can in the chair, you want to reach the back of the seat. A lot of chairs do have a long seat pan is what I call it, the, the part you sit on. Um, and hopefully they adjust. If not, there are different things you can do to fix that. Um, if you need more back support, you can place a lumbar pillow or a small pillow on the curve of your spine. Everyone has a lumbar area. Everyone's area is different. Um, so you can try that. Um, so you want to be able to relax your back, your low back muscles. You can adjust, your, hopefully you can adjust your chair height. Um, so your arms are, again, shoulders down and relax, upper arm by your side and your elbows um, about 90 degrees or a little bit open. If your chair height's not adjustable, if you need to get yourself higher to get to your keyboard, you can sit on a cushion, you can sit on a pillow, different things like that to be able to get to your keyboard and mouse comfortably. I'm gonna have you go to the next slide. So if you're looking for, you know, to buy a chair for your house um, or, you know, just to have, um, these are the features you want. You definitely want the chair to be able to go up and down. Um, again, your feet should rest on the floor with your knees a little bit lower than your hips. They used to say 90-90, right? 90 degrees at your hips, 90 degrees at your knees. But actually, if your knees are a little bit lower than your hips, um, it put your lower back in a more comfortable position, in a more neutral posture. When we sit, our spine is not neutral. Our spine is only neutral when we stand. But if you have your knees are a little bit lower than your hips, like just a slight, um, it puts your spine in a more neutral posture. I talked about the seat pan, the seat that you sit on, the depth of it. Um, you don't want it too long. And most chairs these days are too long for most people. Um, and hopefully, you know, you get a chair that that adjusts. If not, um, because you don't want your calves to come in contact with the seat edge, because that could cut off circulation. And that's um, a pressure on your legs. And that's the contact stress I mentioned before. So you want about one to one to three finger widths between the front of the seat and the back of your calves. If you can't achieve that in your chair, if the seat pan does not move forward and back, um, you can put a cushion again behind you to give you more back support and that'll actually push you forward in the chair. Um, armrests, you want them height adjustable because again, I say down and out of the way is the most um, productive way to put them. Um, and then again, comfort, you wanna be comfortable. And that's why I say a cushion back support and a cushion seat is what I recommend. Again, you can find um, a chair that has a maybe a cushion seat and a mesh back um, to get some comfort um, as long as, like I said, the lumbar area adjusts. Um, but I highly recommend cushion support. And then again, for greater comfort, you want a lumbar support that's adjustable and possibly the angle of the chair, the angle of the backrest can you can you know adjust forward and back um, 
that is, you know, just something extra if you want to look for that. I'm going to have you go to the next slide. So again, what can you do to adapt a chair? And I did mention a lot of these things. Um, you can sit on cushions and padding to hard seats, especially if you're sitting at a dining room chair. Ooh, that's not good for a long period of time. Um, you know, they make the chair cushions. You can put that on the bottom. You can put a pillow on uh, underneath and sit on that. Um, for lumbar support, you can again add a cushion if you want, a pillow, rolled up towels. Um, I recently saw a rolled up yoga mat, which is, I think it's great, um, put behind you. That gives you a lot of support. Um, you, if your feet are not supported, um, you want to have a foot rest. Um, you can use a three ring binder works the best because they're kind of at an angle and you want that angle for a foot rest. You don't want it to be too straight and too high because then you're just lifting your knees up and that's again your knees will become higher than your hips you don't want that um, you can use a box though a, a, a small box a couple of towels books you know a platform you can have a, a couple of books on either side and put a piece of wood anything as i said before the most important things to support when you're sitting are your lower back and your feet because think about sitting I don't know if you ever went to, you know, sat at a bar. Um, you don't want your feet dangling because that actually pulls on your lower back and that's not good. So back support and feet support are the most important. I'm gonna have you go to the next slide. So again, what can you do? Um, rolled up towels, yoga mat pillows. Um, these are kind of pictures of things that um, I recommend to um, people at uh, Mass General Brigham. Um, Again, raise yourself up, sitting on a pillow, a wedge, a cushion, and then the, the foot rests, different things that you can use. I think in the picture of the woman there sitting in a hard chair, she has a rolled up something. It might even be a sweatshirt that she rolled up and she put it in her lower back area. I'm gonna have you go to the next slide. So now we move on to the keyboard height and positioning. Basically, if you're less than six feet tall, you're probably sitting too low. So you wanna be able to have the keyboard height so that your elbows are about 90 degrees. So, you know, 90 degree um, range or slightly opened. You don't want them bent up too high, okay? Cause that cuts off circulation. We don't wanna cut off circulation. Um, again, relax your shoulders, upper arms by your side. You want the keyboard directly in front of you. Again, like driving a car, you know, we sit our steering wheels right in front of us, right? It's not over to the side or anything, everything right in front of you. Um, your keyboard should be flat. A lot of keyboards, I don't know why they ever made these, but you've probably seen um, old pictures of people working on a keyboard or, you know, and their wrists are kind of bent up like this and they're typing, that's not good. You want your wrist straight. Um, so a neutral position of your wrist, which is straight, that's neutral. Um, we use less effort to type when we're neutral. And then you wanna protect against any pressures on the desk edge or the wrist. You kinda of wanna type like you're playing the piano. I know not everybody plays the piano, but when you play the, when people play the piano, they, they float, their hands float, right? Um, they don't go like this and play, they don't bend their wrist down and play, things like that. So you kind of want to float. So there's a couple of pictures there um, showing you what to do, and what not to do. Again, um, wrist bent, um, up or down. You definitely want to float and not have pressure. I'm gonna have you go to the next slide. So again, a couple more examples. Um, the first picture is, you know, the keyboard's too low, her wrists are bent up. Um, the second one, her, you know, the keyboard is too high. Um, she's leaning on the desk edge there. That's not a good thing. That's a contact stress. And then just right, you know, her, her wrists are straight. And then there's a couple of red and green um, good ones and uh, bad ones to go by. The the red picture, her elbows are bent up, not in a 90 degree position or open. The the good one, ideal typing position, um, her the elbows are actually a little bit open and her the wrists are straight. I'm gonna have you go to the next slide. And 
And you also want to think about distance, how far the keyboard is from you, how close it is. So these are just two examples of too far or too close. Um, I always see the too far away picture when I see people. Um, and they're like, well, my, you know, I'm supporting my arms, you know, on the desk. But that again is a contact stress, and you don't want that because on the bottom of your arm, you have nerves that run through here. That's your uh, median nerve. That actually, it's your, you know, runs through your carpal tunnel. If you're putting pressure on that all day long, you're not doing good for your nerve. You're doing damage to your nerve. So you don't want to rest your arms on the on the desk. Actually, so I have you on the next slide. Pointing device, similar thing. Um, you want it as close to you as possible. Same level as the keyboard. I see a lot of times that the keyboard is, you know, at the good height, but yet they have to lift their arm up and reach for their mouse. Um, that's not good. You want it on the same level. You want your arm angle to be um, about less than 90, less than, sorry, less than 45 degrees um, from your, your side. So you don't want your arm to be like, you know, out here, mousing, things like that. Um, you want it, you know, close to your side as possible. A lot of times um, people in ergonomics and human factors, which is um, ergonomics, um, it's about the human interacting with the machine. So you're interacting with the keyboard, you're interacting with the mouse. So it's about how you use it and how you want to use it and the proper way to use it. I see a lot of people, um, I'm gonna use, take my phone as an example, I do this all the time. You know, they're holding their mouse and they go side to side like this with the mouse, that's all they do. So they move at the wrist constantly. What are you doing? You're overworking these forearm muscles. That's not a good thing. They're gonna fatigue. They fatigue a lot quicker than larger muscles. So honestly, you want, it's hard to show you, but you wanna, like again, shoulders down, relax, arms by your side. You wanna move from the mouse from your shoulder. OK, and it doesn't take a lot of effort, but you want to think about keeping that wrist straight as straight as possible and not having any movement side to side or up and down with the with your wrist. OK, um, again, you want to avoid pressures on the wrist. So you don't want to plant a lot of people plant their palm on the desk and then again, move to side to side. You don't want to do that. But it's probably because they're not they don't have their keyboard. Uh, I mean, sorry, they don't have their mouse at the correct height. Um, I would say 95% of the people I see don't have their keyboard or mouse at the correct height. Um, you also want to think about switching it up once in a while, you know, mouse with your left hand um, once in a while. It's not that difficult to do. If you're a quick learner, you can learn very quickly. You can actually on a regular optical mouse, you can the control buttons. So if you're using your right hand to mouse, you have the you use your index finger to do the controls. You can switch those buttons. So if you're left handed, you can do the controls. I'm going to have you go to the next slide. So how can you achieve the correct keyboard and mouse, you know, height? Um, you can raise your, if your chair adjusts in height, you can raise your chair up um, and use a footrest if you need to support your feet, you know, a box or books or something like that. Again, you can, if your chair does not adjust, you can sit on a cushion to make yourself higher. And again, you might need to support your feet on something. Um, if you have a desk set up, I would consider um, an adjustable keyboard tray for a fixed height desk. I highly recommend those because the new ones that are out there are height adjustable and you then you can put your keyboard and mouse exactly where you need it. You can sit back, relax your back and bring the work to you. I see a lot of people when the mouse and keyboard are too high, they actually, you know, they sit, but then they come kind of come up and forward and go to their work. You want to think about bringing the work to you. I'm going to have you go to the next one. So we're gonna talk about the monitor. Um, neck strain is a huge problem with an incorrect monitor hype. And I have definitely found that out when I was in the office. You know, I found that out working at home. When I was in the office, I had my computer monitor at the correct height. Um, now I'm at home working on a laptop more often. And I realized it was too low for a while. And yeah, I got some neck pain, but I fixed that. Um, so you're 
monitor again should be right in front of you. You don't want to avoid any twisting. Again, like driving a car, everything's right in front of you, right? Your steering wheel's right in front of you. You look out the window right in front of you. You don't steer and look out the window to the side, right? So everything's right in front of you. Your monitor should be approximately arm's length away to avoid eye strain, but it does depend on your vision. Um, some people need it closer, some people need it further because of their vision. Um, you want to position the monitor top of the screen so it's at or below eye level. So when you're looking at the monitor, when your head is comfortable, you know, chin slightly down, you're looking at the monitor, um, you want to be at the top quarter of the screen. Some people think middle. Um, and that's not the case. I think it, that's kind of old, again, old school. Um, you want it lower because that's how we read. When our chin is slightly down, our eyes turn in and we're focused for reading work. We have no control of our eyes when we move our head up and down. Um, if you wear bifocals or trifocals, you actually want it lower because people read out of the bottom of their glasses because I, what I find is these are a single lens, these are reading glasses, but you know, people have their screen too high, but they leave it, they need to read out of the bottom of their glasses, so they kind of lift their head and do one of these, and that is not good for your neck, okay? Monitors, hopefully, and I know laptops, you can tilt them back slightly, and which is ideal. Think about reading a book. When we hold a book or magazine, we, you know, kind of hold it tilted back a little bit. We don't hold it straight up and down, so why are our computer screens like that? We want them tilted back a little bit slightly. Um, if you have windows or things like that, you want to think about glare. You want ideally your monitor perpendicular to a window. Um, if you're sitting in front and looking at a window, you're going to get glare on your eyes. It's going to cause eye strain. Or if a window is behind you, it's going to cause glare on your screen. Again, it's going to cause eye strain. Um, so ideally you want it perpendicular. And then dual monitors, if you use two, you want them at the same height, same positioning basically. Um, you want them close together. So you don't, you know, you don't want to be like going like this all day. You want them close together. So you just have to shift your eyes side to side. I'm going to go to the next screen. So how to achieve this correct positioning of height? You can raise it up on books. Um, you can use um, a, a stand if you want. Um, if it's too high, you can raise, if, if your monitor doesn't adjust at all and it's too high, you can raise your chair up, you can sit on a cushion to raise yourself up and use a footrest. Um, most monitors, if they don't adjust up and down, they still at least tilt, so hopefully you can still tilt that back. Um, makeshift stands with books, um, sturdy objects, uh, make sure, look at your eyes. If, if you wear eye glasses or contacts, you know, you kind of have to get your eyes checked every year to, get, you know, if you see if your eyes change. It, actually, if you don't wear anything, unfortunately, as we age, that's the first thing that goes is our eyesight. Um, and especially if you're working on computer all, all day long, I would suggest getting at least every two years. Um, and then you want to follow the 20-20-20 rule, which is every 20 minutes, look 20 feet away for 20 seconds. Um, I also close my eyes occasionally because when you stare at something, you actually blink 50% less. So you're not getting your, your wetting your eyes. So when you blink, you re-wet your eyes. So you don't want dry eyes. So um, I close my eyes occasionally. I'm gonna have to go to the next screen. Laptop computers, which is unfortunately what most people are working on at home. They were not, they're portable and convenient, but unfortunately they were not meant to be worked on for eight hours a day or you know, however long you're working. Um, Cause when the screen's at the right height, that means the keyboard is too low, right? I mean, it's, it's not, at, it's too high, sorry. Um, but if the keyboard, if then you have the keyboard at the right height, then the screen's too low. So it's a trade off, right? So how do we do this? Um, again, they pose, they pose a risk if used for sh less of a risk if used for short periods of time, um, but it's a trade-off, right? So I'm going to have you go to the next slide. 
So best practices when using a laptop, um, again, same as when working as a desk on a desktop, you wanna think about the same principles. You wanna work in neutral postures as, pos as best as possible. You want your back relaxed and supported, shoulders down and relax. Um, place the top of your screen at just or below eye level. Elbows close to your body, about 90 degrees, wrist hands straight. You wanna think of those things and then you wanna to try to figure out how to do that. So I'm gonna have you go to the next slide. Again, if you're using them for more than two hours, which more than two hours can, is considered long-term use, you wanna think about maybe you know, getting a separate monitor, giving, getting a separate keyboard, maybe having a docking station. These are things you can think about. Um, you know, you could place the, the keep, um, sorry, the laptop up on books and then use a separate monitor or mouse. Because again, it's a trade-off. Either, either the screen's at the right height, keyboard's too high, or the keyboard's at the right height, screen's too low. I'm gonna have you go to the next slide. So this is an example of how you can put your screen at the correct height, but then again, you need a separate keyboard and mouse. Um, but it's pretty, it's pretty simple, but you can also put it up on books if you need to. Um, have you go to the next slide. So short-term use, less than two hours is what's considered short-term use. Um, again, a lap, it's called a laptop, right? It's meant to be placed on your lap, but um, you want something between the bottom of the uh, laptop and your, and your lap, actual lap because it gets really hot. You don't want to burn your legs, okay? Um, you want to use a chair that supports you comfortably, upright or slight recline posture, use a towel roll, um, lumbar cushion. <clears throat> Again, laptops, you can move the screen as far back as you need to, because so you want to tilt it back to avoid neck strain. Um, make sure you keep an upright posture. Again, same as working on a desktop, shoulders down and relax, arms by your side. Those are the keys. We're going to go to the next one. So if you're using an external monitor and a laptop is your keyboard, these are things you can do. You can position your monitor, again, at about your arm's length away, or depending on your vision, you might need it closer. Um, the height of the monitor, again, top of your monitor, slightly below eye level, um, or at eye level, tilt it back slightly, like you're reading a book. Again, if you wear progressives, bifocals, you want it lower. Um, if it's too low, then you can put it up on books or a box. Um, if the monitor is too high, then you may have to sit on a cushion or pillow to raise yourself up. Or if your chair adjusts, you want to raise that up. But again, you want to support your feet. No matter what, back, lower back and feet need to be supported. Okay. Okay. You want to, <clears throat> if you're using the laptop as a screen, as I showed before, you can use an external keyboard and mouse and place them at the correct height, and then you can place your laptop either on a stand or books to get it at the correct height. I'm gonna have you go to the next screen. So um, a couple other things um, you wanna think about, lighting. Um, you wanna follow recommendations to reduce your eye strain and eye fatigue, and you don't wanna get headaches, right? When you're working on a computer all day long. Um, you need sufficient lighting. Uh, natural lighting is ideal, but you want to avoid glare. Like I said before, you want to place a monitor perpendicular to a window if if possible. Um, or if you have a window that has shades, you know, pull the shades and maybe use a, a side light, a desktop light um, to, you know, be able to visualize documents and things like that. You don't want to light directly over your monitor because that causes glare on the screen. Your monitor is bright enough and you can actually adjust the brightness and the contrast on your screen um, through the computer. Um, so you ideally desk lamps are meant for documents if you need to read a piece of paper, things like that. And again, follow the 2020 rule. I'm going to have you go to the next slide. And then talk about work habits. This is probably the most important thing. You need to take some breaks, 30 second breaks, right? The next position is the best position. Everyone always asks me, what's the best position? The next position is the best position, right? You need to move, okay? Get up and move. Um, after all said and done, you can't simply sit and 
you know, set it and forget it, right? You need physical activity. That's how our bodies function. The only way we get oxygen and blood flow to our organs, which is how our bodies function, is with movement. So any static position is not good. Sitting for a prolonged period of time is not good, as well as standing for a prolonged period of time is not good. So no matter how ergonomically your workstation is set up, you still need to move. So I say every 30 minutes, even if you just stand up at your desk and do a couple of stretches, you know, some shoulder rolls to get the blood flowing, some scapular squeezes, that is going to be good um, every 30 minutes. So if you're thinking about standing and working, you want to follow this rule. So again, sitting for a long time is not good. Standing for a long time is not good. You want to, so they tell you to sit for 20 minutes, stand for eight, move for two. And move is the most important thing, I think, because going from a sitting position, static sitting position to a static standing position really does absolutely nothing for you. You need to move. Okay. I'm going to have to go to the next slide. So other things you want to uh, talk about, again, I think I touched on this. If you're using a, a lap desk to provide air circulation under your laptop if you're sitting on a couch or bed because you don't want it directly on your legs because it does get hot. Um, you don't want to hold phones. I'll use my cell phone as an example. You don't want to be talking on the phone like this and holding it between your ear and shoulder because that's going to give you a neck problem. You want to think about using a headset or a speakerphone. Um, if you have to reference documents, um, you don't want them flat on your desk. You want to kind of put them up at an angle off to the side. Um, so you can use a, a cookbook stand or a binder to prop them up um, so you can easily see them. And basically your goal is for your body to be as relaxed as possible all the time. Your neck straight, instead of craning or twisting, you know, like holding a phone, relax your shoulders, upper arms by your body, elbows near your side, about 90 degrees. Uh, wrist straight, floating your hands when you're typing and mousing because um, you don't want to plant that hand and go like this. You want to float. Um, so what that means is it's it's everyone thinks a lot. It's the chair. Chair's the problem. I need a new chair, right? Most of the time, it's the height of your keyboard and mouse is the problem. So again, if you're if it's too high, you need to raise your body up, right? If it's too low, you need to raise your body down or raise the keyboard and mouse up. Um, that, to me, is really the problem. I'm going to have you go to the next slide. So again, important points, work in neutral postures, work at proper heights, and then move. If, if anything, these are the three things you want to remember. Okay. Um, and I think we're on to the questions. I'm going to have you go to the next slide. I think I put some examples of what um, we recommend as MG, for MGB employees for products. Um, these are names of products that we highly recommend. We have a list for our employees. If you don't work for MGB um, or Always Health, you check with your employer. You know, they may have um, a program. They may have an ergonomics program, program that you don't know about. Um, they may offer Say yeah, you want an ergonomic, you know, an ergonomic evaluation. We do have a contact person that we have come in. I do this for employ, you know, employers throughout the Massachusetts area once in a while. <clears throat> you know, I'll get a phone call. I do work for national companies, and I consult with them, and they'll say, oh, we have a company in Massachusetts that needs a couple of evaluations, you know, and I'll go do them. Um, so you, you're employer might have a program or they might have a list of ergonomic equipment that they recommend. Um, I wouldn't want you to go buy something for your home without getting some type of evaluation, whether it's a remote evaluation because is what we're doing these days, um, or even just asking questions um, of a specialist because I've had a lot of people that go out and buy things and then they get an evaluation and I don't even recommend what they bought. <laughs> um, so, you know, I would consider that. So I think we're to take some questions if anyone has any questions. Sorry, I went a little over. Hi, yeah, for folks on the phone, um, 
there is a question box, there's a little dashboard to the right on the right of the screen, and in there you can write in questions. So we'll give folks a chance to put some questions in. See? Okay, let's see. So, Michelle, we do have some questions coming in here. Um, the first one is, how do I know if my company has an ergonomics program? Is there some department I should call? Um, I would check with your manager, you know, straight off, um, and then also, or you can check with HR um, if you have an HR department. Um, <clears throat> um, but yeah, I would start there and, you know, work your way up if <laughs> no one knows the answer. If no one knows the answer, then you probably don't have one. But unfortunately, um, you can find someone online, hopefully. Great, thank you. Um, and then to another one, if I want to buy a chair, what should I look for? So in one of the slides I had mentioned, um, you definitely want it height adjustable. I mean, most chairs are height adjustable. The other ideal thing is to have the lumbar back support either mm -hmm. be height adjustable or tension adjustable that you can make it stronger tension or less tension, whatever suits your lumbar area. And I find the other most important thing is the seat pan. You want it to be able to move forward and back. Most of them are adjustable these days. Um, you don't want a seat pan that does not move because um, it's most likely too long for you. Um, so you want to look at those three most important things. <clears throat> Great, thank you. And let's see. Oopsie. I have a question. I'm having a little trouble grabbing it. One moment. Uh, it says, what do you think about a vertical mouse? Oh, again, neutral posture, right? You want to work in neutral posture. So um, I've... I've I'm screen, sorry, <laughs> on screen. An optical mouse, a regular optical mouse makes us put our hand like this, right? So yeah, maybe our wrist is neutral and straight, but my forearm is not neutral. Neutral position of your forearm is actually the handshake position. So a vertical mouse puts your forearm and probably wrist in the neutral posture. So they're great. They're really great. Great, thank you. Let me see here. Make sure I got everybody. Um, this one says, do you have any specific suggestions or exercises to combat slouching? Um, so when we work on a computer, we kind of hunch forward and we're like, you know, like this all day long, right? So getting your shoulders back. And when I said before about movement, do some shoulder rolls and I did them backwards you know because you want to go back you want to go in the opposite direction of what you're sitting in all day long so if we're sitting hunched over and forward like this you want to take yourself back so shoulder rolls backwards scapular squeezes to tighten up the back muscles laying on on a pillow on the floor um, to arch your back a little bit is good because again you want to stretch all this out when we're sitting like this all day long our muscles in the front shorten up and they get tightened so we want to go opposite I'm sorry, Lisa, I can't hear you. I don't know. I'm sorry about that. So I think that is, those are all the questions we had. And thank you again, Michelle. This has been great information. Really appreciate all the recommendations and tips. And I hope that everyone on the webinar has come away from Michelle's presentation with you know, a better understanding of ergonomics and how to adjust their home workspace and equipment for, for greater comfort. Um, we'd like to ask everybody to please take a moment and complete the three question evaluation at the close of this session. And also keep an eye on your inbox for a copy of the recording to share with your friends and colleagues. And last thing before we wrap up, I just want to remind folks to take advantage of telemedicine when appropriate. Um, in order to keep folks healthy and prevent the, the spread of COVID-19, Always Health Partners, along with many other carriers, have ex significantly expanded coverage for telemedicine. Many providers are now offering this really convenient option for you. 
And I just want to urge everyone to keep up with appointments, particularly for condition management and any new concerns that you may have. Um, from both Michelle and me, mm -hmm. thank you all again. Enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe. Thank you.